Hello everyone and welcome to the world of note taking apps. We're taking a deep dive today in seven different apps and surprisingly, Apple is not number one. Now I'm gonna give you a disclaimer. My team tested some of these apps for me. I haven't tested every single one personally, but I have been around most of these apps for a decent amount of time. And even ones like Evernote, well, I was probably one of the first users in Australia to actually install it. Back in the days when cloud synchronization was just a fancy feature, we didn't even really know what it meant. But the day that I bought an iPad and I wanted the stuff on my iPhone to appear on my iPad at the same time, Evernote made a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at all the apps that our team have reviewed and give you some pointers on what we think are best. I'm going to start with the OG Green, and that's because Evernote has literally been on the scene for so long. Unless you were using Notepad in the days before Evernote was around, it's been the staple note-taking app for many, many users in the digital world. Now, it's got a plethora of options for storing notes in many different media formats into your note-taking book. I personally love the ability to record a meeting and have that automatically transcribed into Evernote, but it also saves the meeting recording file as well. Evernote is wonderful. The thing that's not wonderful about Evernote these days, I've got to say, is they've recently killed off their free plan. And for those who have moved on to other note-taking apps, whether that's Apple, whether that's Google Keep, or something that integrates into the rest of your digital ecosystem, well, Evernote is a harder and harder sell because it now costs money for something that many other ecosystems are giving us for free. If you're in the Microsoft world using 365, you're probably going to use OneNote. If you're in the Google ecosystem, you're probably going to use Keep. And while to date, there hasn't been a great easy way of getting your data out of Evernote into many other note-taking systems, it's caused many people to start to consider that now that they've brought in a paid plan just to access some of your historical notes. Evernote has been the default for many individual users and even organizations with their sharing features for many years, but my personal opinion is they're a little old hat and it's time to move on to better solutions. Next up, we have OneNote. And if you're a fan of free form note taking, OneNote really takes the cake here. It's an open canvas for you to get your ideas out of your head and onto your digital version of paper. Now, the thing about OneNote is it's obviously built into the Microsoft ecosystem. And so if you're a Microsoft tech head, well, it's gonna suit you just great. They've got great apps for the mobile and it works on just about any device, even though it's Microsoft centric. So if you're rocking Chrome or even Safari, you're gonna be able to work on a Mac or on a Windows machine pretty much just the same. One of the things I like about OneNote is the free version includes pretty much all the features that the paid version has. And there's some cool features like ink, being able to draw right into there. And OneNote also has a pretty sophisticated mobile app, although some users do complain that it can be a bit cluttered and convoluted to use. I guess that's just the Microsoft way. Sorry, cheap shot, but that's OneNote. Now, moving on to Notion, which has become popular in recent years because it's more than really just a notebook. It's almost like a database for your brain. Notion lets you do a hell of a lot more than just storing notes. And it's aimed at being a wiki and almost like a mini database-y information resource for not just one person's notes, but a whole company's. Now, I've seen small businesses use Notion and really create some really powerful intranets and workflow setups that work great for a small business that wants to have a kind of hybrid between information and knowledge resource and a little bit of maybe project management or strategic management of your tasks inside a business. But it's also pretty free form in that if you want to just dump data or dump information in there, it's pretty easy to do that as well. I have used Notion for a period of time for some of my personal projects. And I've got to say, I really did like it as someone who studied database design, being able to link pages together and create you know, common data blocks that can live in different places within Notion and even organize information in lists and rollups, that really got me going. But the thing that I found that moved me away from Notion was I wanted to use it with some bits of information that required a due date or a project plan or a timeline. And that's where I found myself gravitating towards going back to my task management app. And at the end of the day, I had to ask myself, well, why am I using Notion? It's a little bit of a double up to other tools that I have in my business. We're currently using Google Sites for our intranet. And so that stores most of the knowledge resources of our business. And we use Asana extensively for getting work done, which means that Notion didn't really carve out a niche for itself in continuing to exist in my world of digital organization. I love Notion as an application and if you're not using other more sophisticated tools for note-taking or for storing information anywhere else, give Notion a go. I highly recommend it. 
Now, this wouldn't be the internet's best Google Workspace channel if we didn't handle Google Keep. And Keep has been one of my favorites. It lives both in my business account, but also in my personal Google Workspace account that I've used for many years. And I find myself using Google Keep for what I think you should use a note-taking app for. That's just dumping down random ideas and things that are in my brain right now that I want to bring back at some point in time. Now, the great thing about Keep is no matter what kind of data you put into there, you can easily search for it. And we know that Google are the kings of search, so that makes sense. If I scan an image in, I can do optical character recognition, which tools like Evernote have been doing for a long time, but it's nice to have it there in Keep as well. There's limited formatting options. And the thing I don't like about Keep is if I share a note with somebody else, sometimes it's a little janky if both of us are editing the note at the same time. And I have actually lost data in the past, but Keep is really great at the simple feature of snapping things and finding them later when I need them. Like most things in the Google world, I'm using search to find things rather than using labels, although labels are available if I want to organize that way. I find myself using Google Keep for snapping important receipts and warranties that I may need to refer to at some point in the future. The kind of thing where I might not remember the retailer where I've purchased something, but I do remember the brand of the product or the product name, and I can always search for that and Google Keep will bring that back for me. Google Keep is free and you can put as many notes as you like in there. And unlike other Google products that, yes, they've shut down from time to time, I think Keep is here to stay. Google have integrated it into the rest of the Google Workspace ecosystem, and it's very unlikely they would take that away from enterprise users who have now integrated it into workflows. There isn't the best compatibility, and Keep still doesn't have an API, so you can't programmatically add notes or even migrate notes from another solution like Evernote into Keep. But what you can do is talk to the rest of the Google ecosystem with a few of the interface features inside of Google, like being able to convert a Keep into a Google Doc is handy, and having your your reminders synchronized to your Google Calendar is another great feature. If you're after something simple with deep integration into your Google world, Keep is my pick for you. Next up one for the Mac geeks is Bear. Now, this is a solution exclusive to the Apple ecosystem. And like those tools, they're always beautifully designed, but they're in the walled garden of the Apple world. So you've really got to be an Apple only person for Bear to work for you. Now, it tends to be aimed at those kind of creatives who probably only ever buy Macs anyway, but Bear has a very nice interface and the ability to share notes with others as well as taking great notes for yourself. If I had to sum it up, I'd say that Bear really represents the most aesthetic experience in note taking. They've got markdown support and the ability to import and export your notes easily. But the thing about Bear is it's a pleasurable experience to use the app and the target market being Apple only people who are probably in design or some other kind of creative discipline. We can see what they're going for there. If that's your jam, give Bear a try. Next up, we have Zoho Notebook. And unless you're in the Zoho cult, I mean ecosystem, you probably haven't heard of it. Now, Zoho has a reputation for being a bit of a closed system in that everything needs to be done the Zoho way, a little bit like Salesforce, but it's very powerful as well. If you're willing to put the time into customizing the platform and building it to your business's needs, there are a lot of features and a hell of a lot of functionality if you're doing everything with Zoho. I like to think of Zoho as a kind of second fiddle to the Google ecosystem. They're not a desktop first company like Microsoft. They're a web first platform. And so everything runs online and they're kind of trying to be what Google is with a little bit of a splash of salesforce -y kind of energy in that you can build apps and integrations for workflows right on top of their program. So where do notes come into that? Well, that's the notes that you would naturally use if you were doing everything else in the Zoho world. And it integrates pretty well with the rest of the Zoho apps. You've got a bunch of different formatting options and a bunch of different note taking options for different kinds of media that you can put into the application. It's all encrypted as well. And they're really taking a serious effort to make sure that this is treated seriously because Zoho is one of the world's best productivity suites. And there aren't that many out there. When you think about it, we have Microsoft, we have Google, Zoho, pretty much the only other ones that are well known apart from some niche players in different areas. The other thing that I like that Zoho have done and extra points to them is they've built integrations with many different apps, including Zapier, which helps you to get your data in and out easily. Finally, we come to Apple Notes. And for those of you who needed to write something down and just literally whipped out your phone and without a thought started typing, this is probably where you ended up. Now, no hate for Apple Notes. They have extensive features and they've got a lot of really cool Apple-y things as well. Things like having quick notes accessible from the iOS ecosystem without having to go right into the app or using Siri to make notes or 
maybe even your handwriting being written into an iPad and having the optical character recognition not suck like many other apps do. Apple really nailed the interface if you want something that's just going to work the way that you want to work. Notes are something that I believe don't really need to be shared with others. If you want to collaborate with your team members, that should be in a Google Doc or it should be in a Asana task, somewhere where you're planning on sharing multiple tasks or multiple workloads with different team members. Notes are really your space. And so it's really got to come down to what works for you and how you choose to interact with the note taking app that you want to work with. The thing about notes is it's absolutely bulletproof. You're never going to have some weird janky thing happen with the app where they don't synchronize because iCloud is bulletproof. There's billions of users in the Apple ecosystem and Apple knows that this needs to be absolutely rock solid. Otherwise, people aren't going to dish out their 100 bucks a year for iCloud subscriptions to keep all of their stuff in sync. If you really don't care about how your note taking app works or for any of the other features I've covered in any of the other apps here, you could absolutely just use your iCloud notes. I would say that it may be worthwhile delineating between your work notes and your personal notes. And for that reason, maybe use Google Keep at work and use iCloud for your personal stuff. Whatever works for you, I recommend you have a crack. But I probably wouldn't pick Apple first because it's missing out on, well, talking to the rest of my ecosystem. And for that, I choose to use Google. Now, we're not here to dictate what you should use, but I would love to know what you are using right now. Let us know in the comments down below this video, and I'll see you in the next one.